Welcome to the 2022 Student Government Debates. I'm Carlo Andreasi, and I'm joined by Vice Presidential Candidates Tanya Batista and Trevor Fitzsimmons. Each candidate will have five minutes to answer each question. Let's get started. Trevor, starting with you, introduce yourself, give your pronouns, class ranking, and major. All right, my uh, pronouns are, my name is Trevor Fitzsimmons, he, him pronouns, and um, my class ranking is a sophomore, and my major is in political science. Hi, I'm Tanya Batista, I'm a freshman, and I'm an intelligence and national security major, and my pronouns are she, her. All right, so what other activities, clubs, or jobs are you involved in outside of SGA? Uh, not many here at Point Park because of my deep commitment to SGA, but I am involved with WPPJ and host a radio show from Fridays from 12 to 2. Um, I'm involved in CAB, SINs, and Horn Groundhogs. So what are some of your proudest moments or accomplishments this year in SGA? My proudest moment or accomplishment in SGA came the first week when I uh, wrote a letter to the Senate requesting that uh, accessibility services take more care and more need towards students with disabilities and just advocated for overall reform in the Office of Accessibility. I think my proudest moment in SGA is planning um, Pioneer Community Week. It was originally called Pioneer Community Day, but then we decided to do um, a week-long version of that, just doing community service. Very nice, very nice. So what does being a leader mean to you? What qualities does a leader have? Do you embody these qualities, and if so, how? A leader is responsible for the... Uh, for the members of the organization that the leader is involved with. A leader is transparent with its organization members. A leader is, and a leader is, a leader holds others accountable and expects themselves, themselves to be held accountable as well. Um, I think a leader has the quality such as they are responsible and they do take accountability for their actions. Um, I am the vice chair for finance committee, so I also am responsible for all the finance related um, stuff. So how will you maintain retention within your Senate? How will you train your senators to be better representatives for the student body? I will train the senators to be, to represent the student body first, rather than SGA, then the student body. Right now as it is, it's SGA first, then the students. If elected, that would not be the case. It will be students first, then SGA. Um, I do want SGA to be more engaged within the student body. I know there is kind of a disconnect, um, and I do hope to break that barrier because I think students should know what SGA is and they should be involved in it. Um, a lot of them also do have concerns, but then they also don't know who to go to, and I think that is also an issue that I do hope to resolve. So how do you feel like you and your colleagues can work with the student government president to resolve issues around campus? Um, well, better maintaining transparency around such issues and figuring out what exactly the students want done, what the issue is, and how we collectively as SGA could overcome that issue and solve, and solve the problem. Um, I do want to have like a sit down conversation with the president and just discuss like what needs to be done, not just within SGA, but also within the university. And we can all start from there. And how will you challenge the president in your position and hold them accountable if need be? I will, I will challenge the president by uh, answering to the people that, have, that elect me and to the people that in the Senate rather than, not answer, rather than the president themselves. I will work with the president, but I will not answer to the president. 
I'm a very confrontational person, so I will keep them in check and I will be on top of them and being, hey, like, you know, did you do this? Did you do that? Um, just so nothing gets left out and I will be listening to the student body and all their concerns. So what do you see as a realistic item to get done in your potential term to help the school? Well, I believe first, and this is also an SGA internal problem, attendance for SGA needs to be addressed. If we cannot meet quorum, we cannot have members present in the Senate, we cannot get stuff done. We cannot represent the student body. So we need committee attendance needs to be solved. SGA Senate attendance needs to be solved before we can solve the ongoing issues that the students have at this university. Um, I think a lot of, like Trevor did say, a lot of internal issues do need to be solved. Um, I think we all kind of just need to like sit down and talk and discuss um, and just hope that we do get everything ready in time for the next semester. All right. Describe a project or idea, doesn't necessarily have to be your own, that was implemented primarily because of your efforts. What was your role and what was the outcome? Well, a project that was implemented due to my efforts was uh, I worked with my, one of my committees. The, uh, I serve on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee here in SGA, and uh, I was tasked with helping put on the multicultural fair that we successfully put on here at the university. In fact, I wrote the land recognition for that. Um, I'm currently working on Pioneer Community Week. Um, uh, Sophie Burkholder is the supervisor and Miguel Salvador is my other co-chair. And things are looking really good, actually. Um, we're all really excited. We did reach out to a couple organizations and they all seem really excited. So yeah, we're all happy about that. How will you make sure that facilities in the school will continue to work and be accessible to all students? I will listen to the needs of the students on that concern. I will make it a personal priority that all students have accessibility to the facilities they need on campus. And I will personally see to it that if a concern is not met, that I will personally meet it myself. Um, I will listen to other students' concerns as well as faculty and staff. Um, and like we did, well, oh my God. Like we all do know there are concerns that students do not know about and I think that it should be um, public knowledge too. So last question here. What are some ways that you believe in this vice presidential position? Are you able to be a better moderator between the faculty and staff in the student body? Yes, I feel like the student body and the faculty and staff need to have a relationship and a connection. If there is no connection, nothing can be done. The staff might want one thing, while the students might want another. Therefore, a moderator would be needed. Um, I hope to bridge the gap between the distance that there currently is between um, not only staff and faculty, but just SGA in general and with the student body. All right, well, that's all the questions we have for our candidates tonight. Now for our closing statements. I am here, my closing statement is as follows. I am here to work for you. I am here to bring transparency accountability, and responsibility to this university. I will hold others in SG accountable. I will hold myself accountable. I, I, hold the I will hold the university accountable. I will be transparent with you. I will make sure the university is transparent with you. And I will make sure SGA is transparent with you. I will be responsible, professional, and respectful in my position as vice president. I hope to solve anyone's concerns and issues that they have. And I'm always here to listen. All right, well, that is all the questions we have for tonight. I would like to thank both of you, Trevor and Tanya, for being here. And next up will be the presidential debate. Welcome to the 2022 Student Government Debates. I'm Carlo Andreasi, and I'm here with presidential candidates Drew Simcoe and Kendra Summers. Each candidate will have five minutes to answer each question. Let's get started. 
Starting with Drew, introduce yourself, give your preferred pronouns, your class ranking, and major. Hi, my name is Drew Simcoe. I am a junior cinema production major, and my pronouns are he, they. I'm Kendra Summers. I am a junior journalism major with minors in creative writing and social justice. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am the current vice president of SGI. All right, so what are some other activities, either clubs or jobs, that you are involved with outside of SGA? So currently I work at Student Production Services um, that is located in the library. I help run out cameras and all that fun stuff for the cinema students. I also was a Pioneer Ambassador dur during my sophomore year. Unfortunately, I could not participate in that during my junior year, but I would love to pick it up again. It was a wonderful activity and I look forward to seeing what other clubs have to offer and par uh, potentially participating in those as well. I like to read. Um, I'm a part-time barista at Starbucks, so that does take up a lot of my time and I do really enjoy it. Um, when I started at Point Park, I was supposed to be on the soccer team and I quickly switched that in favor of SGA. What are some of your proudest moments and accomplishments this year in SGA? Some of the things that I'm most proudest of um, are th working with the pronoun policy statement and making sure that Point Park is comfortable for LGBT students all across campus. Um, I am a firm believer in making this a more welcoming place and a more diverse um, and a unifying experience. Um, I also worked with the COVID-19 Student Satisfaction Survey and I definitely took a deep dive into that and wanted to see what everybody had to say on the matter. Also, I worked with the Student Interfaith Group, which is helping to raise awareness for different religious holidays and other things along those lines so that students feel more comfortable. My proudest moment overall this year would have to be the fact that I was selected to be on the Dean of Arts and Sciences Search Committee, which meant I got to go through all of the preliminary and final interviews for that position. Um, I felt like my opinion really held weight during that time, uh, as in I was valued as a student leader in that room. And eventually I was kept around to get to the decision of selecting uh, Dr. Josie Brown for the position. And I really enjoyed it. So what does being a leader mean to you? What qualities does a leader have? And do you embody these qualities? And if so, how? I believe that being a leader means being able to stand up for individuals who may not be able to do so. Um, I believe that I heavily embody those qualities. Um, as I stated earlier, I was a Pioneer Ambassador and I helped lead freshmen to have a better experience here at Point Park. And I think that a leader should also be capable of allowing the people around them to criticize their work. I believe that a good leader should be able to take that criticism and use it to improve themselves in the future. And I heavily want to do that. I do not believe in the definition of leader in a traditional sense. I think it sounds a little too overarching for me. Um, the position of a leader in my mind is someone that serves as a vessel for whatever community that they are attempting to help. Um, my opinion holds no weight over anyone else's in this university, any member of the student body or any other member of SGA. Uh, as president, my only goal and my only desire is to uplift the voices of the people around me to make sure that my opinion isn't the one that's being projected across the university. Um, I think my time as vice president has given me a very, very nice handful of insight into what that means. I've collected a lot of opinions over a lot of things in this course of time. And I've learned that a large part of the job of vice president, which can transfer over into president, is remaining quiet. Sometimes your voice isn't the one that needs to be heard, and you really need to be able to accept that to lead well. Very nice. So what do you see as realistic to get done in your potential term to help the school? I think that the realistic stance is that we need to approach the people in power here at Point Park um, head on and firmly state the things that we want to happen and the changes that need to be made. I think that realistically we can accomplish a lot and we have that ability to accomplish those specific things that need to be laid down and we cannot be pushed over. We cannot sugarcoat things. We need to address those situations. And realistically, there's just so much stuff that is going, up, going on around this school that is disappointing and even depressing to see. There are changes that these people are trying to make that go against um, personal beliefs that I know a lot of students have in myself personally. 
there are a lot of depressing and disappointing things and I know that there are so many students with a lot of passion and motivation to make changes around the school to make it a better place and I want to uplift those people and help them do the things that they aspire to do. I think I have a lot of goals and aspirations for the upcoming year if I were to serve as president. But um, the number one thing I've noticed as vice president is that there is a severe disconnect between the student body, especially within different schools of education. For example, COPA with COM. Um, sometimes we like to take our anger out on each other rather than the administration. Those are the two biggest um, concepts within my platform. I would like to unify the student body as well as holding administration accountable for several of the things that they've projected onto us and made us fight each other rather than them. Um, I'd say realistically, it would be a lot of events, a lot of social gatherings to bring these people together, people that would never interact if they weren't in the same space by some happenstance. Um, I would say that'd be my initial goal going into this year. So what role do you see your executive cabinet holding in light to the student body? I think that they should be role models towards the student body and they should be people that both the Senate and the student body feel comfortable approaching with their concerns. I believe that we have to have open communication on both ends to allow progress to be, ma to be made. And they should all just be willing to make changes and have um, strong opinions on the things that they want to change and wholeheartedly believe in their causes. A hint of criticism that I've gotten through being vice president and through my recent campaign is that our executive cabinet is not as approachable as they could be. Um, we do have office hours where anyone can stop in and talk to us, but that doesn't give any of the student body a personal connection with each person on the executive cabinet. So for the next year, I would aim to promote ourselves more. Every member, there are 10 at the moment, and that is a lot of people to get it done with. But I believe if we have a deeper connection with the student body, make our legislative body meetings more accessible to students, um, have events, that are sort of a get to know this person kind of nature and make sure that they don't see us as a group that is unattainable, someone that they can't talk to. Um, I'd like to keep the reality that the executive cabinet is not above any of the student body, but we ourselves are students and we should be approachable as such. What was the biggest mistake that you've made when delegating work to members of your organization? And what did you learn from this? I think that the biggest mistake that I made potentially was maybe trying to make the members of my committee do too much. Um, they all have special talents that I want to see them thrive in and truly show their colors and the things that they want to do. I think that I want to find each individual's um, talents and really cater to those abilities and allow them to f progress in the ways that they wish to progress. Um, I know that there are a lot of people who may feel uncertain in the things that they m want to do with student government, but I want to be able to push those people in the right direction so that they can achieve things that they want to see get done. I believe that the biggest mistake I've made this year or serving as vice president is within delegation and motivation. Um, I've had moments where I've assumed that someone can take on more than they can handle because they've presented the situation as such. But I think that being a leader means you have to be aware and in tune with other people's inner emotions, which means just because someone says they can do something doesn't mean they're in the right headspace or that they should have to take it on. And while delegation is a big part of the job, whether vice president or president, you have to acknowledge that some people might not be in the mental space to do what you are requiring them to do at that moment. Um, and that comes from a place of understanding the people you're working with. I'm very, very about learning uh, the personal inner workings of the people that I'm sharing this job with. And, and if you don't have the foundation of at least a baseline friendship, you will never be able to get into the heads of these people and understand where they're coming from. So I think the biggest mistake that I've made is sometimes viewing these people as strictly coworkers and not people that I can get to know on a deeper level. And how will you maintain retention within your Senate? Bonding activities. I want to see so much more bonding going on between the senators. Um, I know that there were some personal issues between the senators, and not just the senators, but also the senators and executive cabinet. Um, I want to host events and see them come together as a community and friends and form those bonds that I 
aspire to see them create. I just know that there are so many great things that the senators can do, and I want their work to feel worth it. I want them to know that the stuff that they have been working on is making a change and making a difference, and I want to be able to show my appreciation towards them. Several times, um, and I've got this criticism quite a lot in the last year, um, there are initiatives that are started and then have fallen flat on their face and no continuation has been taken from that point. And I think the secret to retaining people for any organization or for any initiative at all is to make sure that what they're doing follows through. Um, if you see no change, you will not be inclined to come back. So I would like to implement, I'm not saying a new system, but rather a sort of follow through on initiatives that may have fallen through in the past. Um, I'd like every person to feel accomplished and have made achievements within this organization because all of our senators do an insane amount of work and I want them to feel the achievement from what they do because they do deserve that. With the Office of Equity and Inclusion being split up and only two organizations on campus having specific DEI chair roles, what is something you hope to do to ensure diversity, equity, and inclusion is still enforced around campus, especially within all the student-led organizations? There are a ton of student-led organizations that heavily focus on equity and inclusion, um, such as the BSU, GSSA, the Latinx Club. I think that uplifting those clubs and allowing them to have a better, a better voice and a better platform within Point Park University is a great way to have students feel comfortable coming to these clubs and voicing their opinions and wanting to be heard more. And we can push those clubs to have more events and give them more funding potentially and allow them to gain a better following and become um, better heard on campus. I was in attendance as vice president for a meeting today with President Dennis McDermott, DEI Chair Bagaporo, and Recording Secretary Skeels. Um, we were in the meeting with President Don Green, Dr. Soto, and other members of the Office of Equity and Inclusion. Um, what I can tell you at the moment is that things are being worked on. Um, I wish I could give more detail, but part of the job is keeping certain things under wraps until it is ready to talk about. Um, but do stay tuned next week for a deeper understanding of SGA's position on the Office of Equity and Inclusion. With some colleges and schools removing mask policies, do you think it's wise to remove them? And will Point Park follow suit? So personally, I believe that the mask mandate for the safety of all students should stay in place. I know that some may believe that the pandemic is dying down, but I beg to differ on that situation. The pandemic is still going on as strong as ever, and I believe that the safety of students is a number one priority. Students need to feel safe and comfortable no matter what, whether they be immunocompromised or whether they are not. Students should not be coming down with illnesses or feeling sick. I also believe that we should have a cleaner campus and work on making sure that everything is as neat and tidy as possible so that the um, transferring of the COVID-19 um, virus is slowed and minimized. Before I get started on that, I'd like to say that I am 100% in favor of the mask mandate for Point Park University. Um, a large argument that I've heard against that fact is uh, the argument of personal choice. And while I am a big believer in personal choice and bodily autonomy, I don't believe that choice, per se, applies when you are directly endangering or affecting other people. Uh, we have immunocompromised students. We have students that are just more prevalent to illness. We have students with underlying disease. Um, it is absolutely unfair to decide that you will be unmasked as a personal choice when your personal choice affects everyone else in the university, especially as we do require vaccinations, but it is always up to the uh, student's discretion based on their personal exemption. So I would be 100% in favor of mask mandates. And if the school was to unilaterally decide that the mask mandate will be dropped, that would be something I would fight. So last question here. Commuters are a majority of the student population, but a widely neglected group. How will your platform advocate for more commuter resources? Commuters make up a huge percentage of Point Park's population, and I feel like people do not actually acknowledge that. Um, I think that commuters need better access to parking closer to downtown. Some students park all the way across Smithfield Bridge, and that is ridiculous, especially with some of the weather that we have, and just having to walk that distance all the way to campus is insane to me. Students should be able to just park and get to class on time. 
Um, there is free parking on Boulevard after 6 p.m., but that is only after 6. And students have classes that begin at 6. We need to have those parking spaces available for students to rent out and reserve so that they can make it through their classes on time and receive the best quality of education that they can get. My sophomore year, I was involved in the conversation of free bus passes for commuters. Um, that was something I was very, very, very involved in. I took my own time to go to the Port Authority board meeting, which happens all the way down by um, Duquesne. And it was discussed, and it was brought up, and it was talked about in conversation in a way that it seemed like it could happen. And immediately after that meeting, um, COVID-19 got worse and Port Authority was no longer in constant contact with us about that reality. That is something that I'd like to spark up again. Um, I do believe that if you are commuting to a university with the funds to do so, they should be providing bus passes for you. And I don't mean reduced fare the way that we have now, $1 after 7 p.m., which doesn't help anyone because most classes are before 7 p.m. Uh, I'm talking about University of Pittsburgh style, tap your card, free bus passes. Um, in addition to that, I'd really like to see um, a revamp of the common spaces for commuters. Um, there are some people that do not have the ability, as in they do not have a car or an easy mode of transportation, to take one class and leave, which means that they are here for an extended amount of time between classes. And I think the cleanliness and the overall energy of the facilities that we have, such as the second floor lounge, such as the fourth floor lounge, um, could be upped. Um, I think we need to keep these spaces clean. We need to keep them nice and friendly. We need to make sure they're accessible for these people. Um, I wouldn't want to be on campus for that many hours and not feel like I was valued in that space. All right, and that's all we have for questions. Now I'm going to ask each candidate to give their closing statement. I have a lot of great ideas that I want to begin to initiate on Point Park campus. Um, I am endorsing um, Vice Presidential Candidate Tanya Batista, who also has a lot of ideas that I plan on working with her towards bettering campus. Um, such as the vice, um, the bus passes. I know that Tanya has been taking initiative on that. I also want to continue to work with the student interfaith group and work with COVID-19 safety around campus to ensure that everyone feels comfortable. Um, I know that there are a lot of things that Point Park has been trying to sweep under the rug and I personally do not stand for that. I think that we need transparency and we need open communication and we need to be able to advocate for the things that we want to get done. I do not think that any sugar coating should um, be able to slide by and I think that students need to have a voice and they need to be amplified and we're not going to sit here as students and allow ourselves to be treaded over. My platform um, is based on two things and that is the unification of the student body as a whole regardless of schools and holding administration highly accountable. Um, I believe those two things work hand in hand and I don't think that one can exist without the other. Um, I do not claim to be anyone's perfect leader but I do claim to have the knowledge, especially with the position I've been in for the past year as vice president, to uplift the voices of people that need to be heard within this university. Um, without a united front, we will not be able to confront the university the way that we need to, and we'll fall flat and we will attack each other rather than them. Thank you to each of our candidates for participating. Students can vote on Point Sync from March 25th through March 31st. You can follow student government on Instagram and Twitter at SGA underscore PPU. I've been Carlo Andreasi representing UView Television. Happy voting, everyone.